Hello everyone and welcome to Spotlight on the issue of xenophobia on the African continent. South Africa was once again the scene of violence described as xenophobic in early September 2019. The South African authorities prefer to simply target crimes. For me, it's pure criminality, people looting and all that, and using that as a xenophobia. But for now, there is nothing that has sparked uh, any form of this conflict between South Africans and the foreign nationals. So that, that we're dealing with criminality rather than xenophobia at the present moment. Criminality may be, but the looters attacked mainly Nigerian traders and also Zimbabwean, Congolese and Zambians. The South African authorities are losing a lot of prestige with these attacks. No wonder they are trying to minimize them. On the flip side, Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari, takes this matter very seriously. This is what he wrote on social network on September 9. I will continue to do everything possible to ensure the safety of lives, properties and economic interests of Nigerians in South Africa and South Africans in Nigeria. In the meantime, Nigeria suspends its participation in the World Economic Forum in early September in Pretoria and chartered planes to repatriate Nigerians who wish to leave South Africa. As our president has said and, has, and he has been showing, we will continue to preach love, brotherliness and unity. So we just appeal to the South African government to show the political will to stop these killings. And one of the ways to do this is ensure that there are consequences for action. Summarily, violence against foreigners in South Africa has become a crime. Every day, attacks of this kind are reported across the country. The graph you are seeing covers the period between 2006 and 2018. It shows that classified xenophobic attacks peaked in 2008 with more or less violent aftershocks in 2015 and 2017. The 2019 stats are yet to be compiled. The South African political class has been outspoken in the face of this violence. Siri Ramaphosa said that there is no excuse against xenophobia. Julius Malema believes that the anger of his compatriots is directed at the wrong people, referring to the legacy of apartheid. But when it comes to xenophobia, South Africa is not an isolated case on the continent. Foreigners are the perfect scapegoat for many other African countries, starting with Nigeria, Zambia, and even the Democratic Republic of Congo, where South African interests have been targeted by angry citizens in the name of fight against xenophobia. We are tired of being beaten every day. We are all Africa. Why must we be afraid to go to South Africa? Which South Africa has ever been beaten in Zambia? Which one? We want the ambassador to address us. We are tired. Enough. That's enough, but when it comes to a tough migration policy, Nigeria has nothing to envy from South Africa, and that's not new. In the 1980s, President Seshu Shagari, Nigeria's first democratically elected president, issued a decree that served on anti-foreign sentiment. Ghanaians and foreigners had to leave the country for economic reason. Hashtag Ghana must go. The same Nigeria closed its borders with Benin and Togo on August 19 to combat smuggling. Anti-foreign rhetoric also fits public opinion in many Central African countries, particularly in Equatorial Guinea, Gabon and even Cameroon. In July 2015, 2,500 Nigerian refugees in Cameroon were forcibly returned to their country. The authorities explained without evidence that these Nigerians were responsible for the intensification of Boko Haram's attacks. Cameroon has just suffered in two weeks these suicide bombings on its territory, which had not happened until then in our country, and which are already growing on the other side in Nigeria. Unfortunately, because of the Boko Haram, which emerged in 2002, and which since 2009 has intensified its terrorist activities on the territories, today, as we've heard, have renamed to the Islamic State in West Africa. You can understand the gravity of the situation. Here with me is Briski, no journalist, at Africa News. Brace, I have just painted a rather gloomy picture of xenophobia on the continent. Can we still say that Africa is a land of hospitality? Oui. To answer your question, yes, African countries remain hospitable. According to recent studies, 80% of African migrants move to other countries on the continent. This situation is favored by the flexibility of migration policies. Countries such as Côte d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Senegal and South Africa attract people from border countries to them for different reasons. People move to neighboring countries to exploit either land or mineral or oil wealth. 
Stories on African news and other outlets, uh, we see a migratory policy in Africa which is ambivalent, sometimes repressive, as in Morocco, for example. It is true that five years ago, Morocco launched an ambitious national immigration and asylum strategy according to the Department of Migration Affairs and the National Health Insurance Agency. Primary care is accessible to regularized migrants, but in the absence of access cards, secondary and tertiary care are not free. However, not everything is rosy in the kingdom of African migrants. They face deep xenophobia and severe social and economic marginalization. In 2018, for example, Morocco carried out mass expulsions of sub-Saharan immigrants. Efforts still need to be made to welcome Africans to African countries. Efforts still need to be made on the African countries. Indeed it is. Thank you. That was Spotlight and information continues on africanews and africanews.com.